both saw changes in terms of my mental aptitude, in terms of the networking of my brain. That is crazy. Doing meditation, taking nootropics, playing brain games, doing body scans, trying to be more mindful has a clear, scientific, noticeable change. What is going on world? I am the Hungarian experiment and welcome back to the neurohacking experiments. If you guys haven't been following along the neurohacking experiments, this is actually like the 15th or 16th or maybe even the 17th video in this whole series that I've done with Ben Switzer where I hopped on his cognitive enhancement or cognitive optimization program. Basically, it was a lot of meditation, nootropics, brain games, a lot of pushing my my mind to areas that I never done before. And if you guys watched the last video in the neurohacking experiments, we broke down the cognitive battery test. So basically what the cognitive battery test was, it was a gamified assessment that read my brain before and after the neurohacking experiments. So basically I did a 30 to 40 minute uh, series of games and those games read, led to results. And um, as well with those, we also did brain scan EEG readings. So if, again, if you guys haven't checked out those videos, I found it super fascinating getting my brain scanned. It was a lot of fun and just something cool that I can say I've done in my life. So I really suggest going to check out those videos and leave some love if you uh, uh, guys do go check them out so in this video I'm about to break down those results for you guys if you guys are interested and you want to see more on the subject I actually broke down these results on my blog and I show the the results pre and post so you guys can see all the results everything that came in now unfortunately with the brain scans unlike the cognitive battery test both pre and post, I got four separate PDF files that are over 27 pages long each. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to share those with you. I will throw them up on the screen here real quick so you guys can have an idea of what those look like. But basically, what I got back from the neurofeedback therapist was a profile report breaking down those brain scans. So this report, I believe, is about 10 to 15 pages long, maybe, yeah, somewhere in that range. And um, it is just a summary and an analysis of all the brain scan readings. So um, again, I don't know a lot about this stuff. I'm no neurofeedback therapist, but just like with the cognitive battery results, there are changes, you can see changes. There are changes in numbers, there's decrease in hyperactivity and hypoactivity in different areas of my brain. Uh, we're gonna cover that in this video, but again, I don't fully understand this. And as I mentioned towards the end of the cognitive battery uh, uh, analysis video, is that just because there are these significant changes either in improvement or retrogression, it does not mean that those are gonna last long term. And it also doesn't mean 100% that like those are significant changes that, like I said, are gonna last. Um, similar to working out and going to the gym, especially if you're a noob, you're gonna have muscle soreness. You're, if you do a heavy leg day, like I just did a heavy leg day and I've been going to the gym for a long time and my muscles are sore right now, but that does not mean my legs are not getting stronger and they're not getting bigger. But I can, like I've reduced mobility, I'm sore, I'm hindered from just my normal movements and things, so, uh, to someone seeing that documented in terms of results that might be like, whoa, there's a decrease here or there's a wild increase. But as things over time and things become habitual patterns in your life, as we're reworking neural pathways in my brain or you're doing it for yourself, um, those things will solidify and change. So again, I'm gonna rip through these results. If you guys are interested, make sure you guys go check out the blog posts in the description box below. If you're new to my channel, my journey, maybe you just stumbled along this video, make sure you guys go check out the neural hacking experiments, uh, the, all the videos in the series so you have an idea of what I did throughout all these, but let's hop into these results. So I made sure to add the first couple pages from the reports and the changes that went on in terms of pathology and arousal. I don't fully understand them. Again, I'm not a neurofeedback therapist, but 
Uh, I wanted to share that there was a 20% decrease in delta power in terms of pathology and a 10% decrease in low delta power in arousal. Arousal can be described as the activation of the autonomous nervous system and the central nervous system. It is related to mental alertness and is reflected by heart rate, heart rate variability, pupil dilation and muscle tone. Arousal level is very important for mental performance. So a big part of the neurohacking experiments and what Ben was trying to do and I, I believe as well as he believes is that you can train different areas of the brain. So I'm already like I didn't need to work on certain things like I'm already committed to lots of things like I'm dedicated, I have habits, I'm very physical, like I, I'm very active. So there were certain areas that we didn't need to train but we wanted to really train on focus to improve my productivity, to improve my workflow. And um, so that's part of what you guys might see here is that through the meditation um, I might have lowered my intenseness, my hyperactivity in areas. So just because it's showing a decrease as well here, and again, I don't fully understand these results, but just because there's a decrease in certain areas, that might be something that he intended to do. We wanted to downregulate or decrease the amount of activation in certain areas so other areas could be heightened. Just something to keep in mind. Again, I don't fully understand this, I don't fully know this, but I just wanted to share that with you guys. So from here, we're gonna move on to the default mode network. So in terms of the network activity, there was a 30% decrease in hyperactivity and a 30% decrease in hypoactivity. In the network connectivity, there was a 27% decrease in hyperconnected and 7% decrease in hypoconnected. So the default mode network is active during rest and is associated with self-reflected processes or mental stimulation. The default mode network consists of frontal brain areas that are known to be involved in higher executive functions such as working memory, planning, and cognitive control. So this is where if you guys uh, watch my cognitive battery results analysis, you can see that some areas are coming into play here. So I had changes in terms of my working memory, in terms of my visual spatial working memory, in terms of my episodic memory, in terms of my planning, there was a huge change. So what we should actually see is a contrast between the cognitive battery results and the uh, EEG brain scan readings. And I'm actually gonna cover that in a separate video, but I wanna make sure I give the due diligence to each set of results here because I think these are very fascinating and interesting for myself, and hopefully you guys find this interesting as well too. But what's really cool is here, the changes in the colors. So you can actually see the changes from left to right is pre and post. So like that's really cool to me. Next, we move on to the dorsal attention network. So the dorsal attention network consists of frontal and parietal areas which are important for higher executive functions such as working memory, goal-directed actions, and attention. The dorsal attention network consists of the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex which is associated with cognitive control, working memory, and awareness. The inferior parietal lobe, which is important for goal-directed action, creativity, and reasoning, and the superior parietal lobe, which is known to be involved in imagination, advanced motor skills, and visual attention. And in terms of network activity, there was a 50% decrease in hyperactive and 34% decrease in hypoactive. In terms of network connectivity, there was a 14% decrease in hyperconnected and 13% decrease in hypoconnected. From there, we move on to the emotion regulation cortex. So the ERC plays a role in emotion regulation, empathy, risk assessment, decision making, and fear processing. The emotion regulation cortex consists of the middle frontal gyrus, which is involved in emotional decision making, and the orbital frontal gyrus, which is known for its role in the evaluation of emotional stimuli and the representation of the somewhat intangible concepts of personality personality or cognitive style. Very cool. I apologize if I'm losing my voice on you guys. I had a big event tonight that I was talking at and it's about 2 in the morning. I'm leaving 
for Winnipeg at four in the morning. So it's been a long day, but uh, I wanna get through this. So I apologize, guys. The sensory motor complex is next. So the sensory motor complex is responsible for somatosis sensory processing, the sense of touch, and preparing and executing motor actions. This system is called the mirror neuron system. There, in terms of network activity, I had a 62% decrease in hyperactive and 75% decrease in hypoactive. Wow, that's some pretty big changes. And in terms of network connectivity, 9% decrease in hyperconnected and 7% increase in hypoconnected. From there, we move on to the memory network. Uh, the network activity, there was a 50% increase in hypoactive. Network connectivity, there was a 5% decrease in hyperconnected and 11% decrease in hypoconnected. So the memory network is consisting of the hypocampal areas located in the medial temporal lobe and is involved in encoding storage and the retrieval of long-term episodic and semantic memory. The hypocampal areas are known to be pivotal for encoding and retrieval of information about autobiographical events, which not only include information about the who, what, where, when, and how, but also about the emotions that accompany the event. It is responsible for encoding and retrieval of semantic information, which refers to factual knowledge. So cool, wow, this is fascinating, guys. I hope you guys are getting as much out of this as I am, and if you see there, look at the changes, like, that's really cool. And lastly, we have the visual cortex. So the visual cortex is a group of occipital brain areas that is specialized in processing visual information. The visual cortex is hierarchically organized with respect to the complexity of visual features that it processes. Low-level visual features such as color, contrast levels, and line orientations are processed in the primary visual cortex. Well, there you have a world. I believe through the brain scan EEG readings that I just broke down for you guys, as well as the cognitive battery tests that we run parallel with each other to see and make sure that we had uh, multiple sources of information coming out, both saw changes in terms of my mental aptitude, in terms of the networking of my brain. That is crazy. Doing meditation, taking nootropics, playing brain games, doing body scans, trying to be more mindful, has a clear, scientific, noticeable change. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I don't believe we can take 100% conclusive evidence from this, but I believe through further documentation, further scientific testing of myself, as well as hopefully hundreds and thousands of others, we can prove and show that there is legitimate scientific research behind this, as well as legitimate scientific facts that there are changes and benefits to all this. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you got value from this, if maybe you're gonna try neurohacking for yourself, I'd really love if you go hit that like button and of course, leave me a comment. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. As I mentioned, I'm gonna do a summary where I kinda compare the EEG readings to the cognitive battery results. And then the following video, we're gonna just wrap all of this uh, neurohacking experiments up for you guys. So this is gonna be a pretty long series. I really appreciate all your support, whether you're watching this as I'm doing this, or maybe in the future, all the support I get from you guys on this YouTube channel is absolutely amazing. So I really appreciate it. I'm super grateful for my position in my life right now 2 a.m. in the morning being tired making this video here for you guys because yeah like I personally believe the neurohacking experiments have allowed me to be a lot more mindful and grateful about my journey in life and just allowed me to see that again it's kind of this you know from the outside looking in it doesn't look like there's much change but in here I just see my life in a whole new different way and I believe the microdosing experiments have had a huge effect on it but even before I started doing that I was just uh, experimenting around with meditation and pushing it to the test through these neurohacking experiments. I believe I've seen gotten some great results that I'm going to carry on through the rest of my life. So. I really suggest if you're watching this video, if you made it this far, if you're this interested in it, that you experiment with this stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am the Hungarian Experiment.